Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their June of 2015 regional auction. And when I come to look at guns in a place like this, one of the things I find is that there, there are a couple specific points in history that just seem to produce a lot of really interesting designs. And not surprisingly, wars are one of those places. In particular, the U.S. Civil War resulted in just a plethora of new and creative gun designs because it was an opportunity for entrepreneurs to make potentially a lot of money selling guns to the government, mostly the federal forces, but potentially also the Confederacy. And it was also a time period that coincided with the invention of the metallic cartridge. So people don't, you know, there's this whole new technology developing at the same time that there's a huge profit potential for new guns. And that leads to all sorts of interesting guns. Well, one that I have here today is a Palmer carbine. There were a thousand of these guns made, or a thousand and one, depending on what, what paper you see. Um, they were patented in 1863. The Union government ordered them, uh, a thousand guns as a trial uh, for the cavalry. They ordered them in 1864. They got delivered in 1865, just after the end of the Civil War. So these never actually saw service. In fact, they're all, including this one, government marked. They have government inspection stamps and cartouches on them. But because they were, they were brought into uh, inventory late, they ended up being sold at auction to the public shortly after they were acquired. So never actually saw service. But they're a very interesting design. This is set up for the 5650 caliber Spencer cartridge. So it's a rimfire cartridge. Um, 5650, it, when you talk about the Spencer cartridge designation, indicates that the base of the cartridge was 56 caliber and the, the actual muzzle, or the bore, was 50 caliber. So it's a 50 caliber uh, barrel. Spencer had a couple of different cartridges. They had a 5650, a 5652, and a 5656. So they kept the same case head and they kind of changed the taper and adjusted the bore diameter. At any rate, um, Palmer, the guy who developed this carbine, figured, and this is a good idea, if you're going to market a gun to the Army, you might as well use a cartridge that they already have in stock. So he went with the standard Spencer cartridge. These were manufactured by a company called E.G. Lamson out of Windsor, Vermont. Uh, Lamson is also known for being involved with the ball carbine, which was another, another interesting design of the period. So why don't I go ahead and bring the camera back and let's see how this thing works. So there are a couple interesting markings that we can take a look at to begin with. First off here, we have the markings from the manufacturer. So it is marked U.S. because these were accepted into U.S. service, just never used. Um, and then the company that manufactured them is E.G. Lamson & Co. out of Windsor, Vermont. Uh, the markings on this one are, are very faint. They're pretty heavily worn, so it's a little tricky to see them. We also have a set of markings on the top of the receiver. These are also pretty hard to read, but I think we can make them out there. Uh, first line is William Palmer, or W.M. Palmer. He's the fellow who invented this. Patented, and the patent date there is uh, December 23rd, 1863. So with that in mind, oh, and since we're right here, I should also point out we have a government cartouche on the stock. The same MM initials are up here on the receiver and right down underneath the sling bar right there. All right, now that we know what this thing is called, let's take a closer look at the cool stuff, which would be how it actually works. So this is a bolt action, but it is hammer fired. I'm going to start by cocking the hammer. Now these were designed for a rimfire cartridge. And in fact, you can see here that there is an opening clear into the chamber. Uh, there's a little angled slot cut on the side of the bolt. And what happens is when you pull the, pull the trigger, the hammer drops and this little nub on the hammer here goes clear into the chamber and hits the rim of the cartridge. And that's what fires the gun. Um, this one is the, the metal has been deformed a bit, probably by about 200 years of people dry firing the gun, which is unfortunate, but you know what, that's what's going to happen. Now, in order to load and unload the gun, we have a bolt action back here. I rotate this 90 degrees, and then it opens out the back. All right, so we have two sets of locking lugs on the back of the bolt. They're basically cut like V-shaped threads. So you've got a whole bunch of them. And they obviously lock into a matched set of recesses up here in the receiver. Disassembly of the Palmer is really quite simple. Do we have to have the hammer at least at half cock? Uh, in fact, if the hammer is not cocked, you can't open the bolt 
because the hammer is in that wedge and prevents the bolt from rotating. So, hammer at half cock, open the bolt, and then we're going to take the trigger and push it forward, and then the bolt slides out. So it turns out there is, there is a little peg, spring-loaded peg, inside on the very bottom of the action that runs in this channel, and it can go up there so you can cock the bolt and back down. So we're looking in the back of the receiver here with the bolt out. You can see the threading on, well, on this side. There is also threading on that side. And right in the middle there on the bottom, you can also see that stud that holds the bolt in place. So when I push the trigger forward, you can see that stud drop. That's what allows you to put the bolt in or take it out. You know, this sort of thing looks very odd to the modern eye because, you know, we're expecting a hole and a firing pin in there, and it's very just kind of weird to see a bolt face that's just a solid chunk of metal. Well, because this is rim fire, and again, there's the little cutout so that the hammer can come in and hit the rim of the cartridge right there. Um, because it's rim fire, there is nothing in the middle. So all we have, we have our bolt face cut out for the hammer, and we have our extractor right here, which is the extractor has a kind of a metal ring holds it in place here. I suspect that taking out that screw would allow you to remove this back section and take the extractor off. I'm not going to do that because frankly that screw is kind of beat up already and I don't want to damage it further. So there you go. There you go. You can see that that's, that's spring loaded. That's kind of a nice advance in technology for this period. You know we're talking US Civil War here. Um, the idea would be that pushes down when the bolt goes forward. We have our extractor here. That's going to pull the spent case out, and as soon as it clears that, that spring-loaded ejector, it pops out, and that chucks the case out of the action. Uh, presumably, having not tried this, I couldn't say 100% for sure, but presumably they have carefully cut this action open such that it will, that ejector will punch the cases out without them bouncing off the hammer and getting lodged back in the gun. So, in order to fire the gun, you put one of your cartridges in, push the bolt closed, rotate it 90 degrees to lock, and you can see we have a nice effective safety here in that until you have actually rotated the bolt all the way into battery, this slot for the hammer doesn't open up. So if the bolt's not locked, I can't fire the gun. Then pull the trigger, hammer comes down, and the hammer slots right into there, hits the rim of the cartridge and fires it. So our rear sight here has settings for 100, 300, and 500 yards. The main notch, where it is right now, is the 100 yard notch, and then there's a little notch in the bottom of that peep sight. That's for 300, and then this one is 500. So for the longer range, you would lift that up, and that gives you your long range sights. The front sight here is just a very simple blade. Pretty typical of Civil War era guns, frankly. The one other interesting item of note is that we do have a cavalry bar here. So you would hook your sling on this, and that allows you to carry the gun in a, a strap, uh, like a cross brace strap. It's, frankly, it's an early tactical single point sling. And this is a very common feature indicative of cavalry carbines. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know there are some people out there who only collect guns that were actually used by the military. But there are certainly a lot of people out there who are interested in the guns that were tested by the military, and especially these you know, interesting little technological side notes. If you'd like to add this to your own collection or use it to start your collection of such guns, this one is coming up for sale in Rock Island's regional auction. Uh, it's, it's in kind of rough condition, but you know, that's the beauty of the, the regional auction sometimes. It gives you an opportunity to get some of these guns that you wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. So if you click the link below, that'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page on the Palmer Carbine. You can take a look at their pictures and their description, and uh, set up an account and place a bid online, or come down here in person. Thanks for watching.